This is our third session now on 316 to 45. And uh, scripture as breathed out by God and profitable is what we saw is the word that is to be preached. And we spent two sessions on 10 traits of true preaching in these verses. And now I said we would turn to why there is such an, an urgency. Be ready in season, out of season, no matter how unseasonable it is at the church or in your own life. Never leave off the ministry of the Word in, in preaching, heralding, which involves teaching, but isn't exactly the same as teaching, heralding the word, declaring, proclaiming, announcing, which involves a showing the error of people and showing them how serious the error is as they are rebuked and then turning it very positively to exhort and encourage them on with patience and much explanation of what is wrong here and why it's so serious and how they can move forward in Christ in season, out of season. So what is the reason that all of that, with all of its seriousness here, is so urgent. That's what we're looking for now. And the key is found, or the signpost is found in this word for. So it's coming right here. This is the reason why preaching is so essential. So Father, I pray that you'd show us now Paul's argument for why preaching the word in season out of season with rebuking and reproving and exhortation, patience and teaching is so crucial. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Preach the word this way because the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers that accord with suit their own desires and passions. They will turn away from listening to the truth and they will wander off into myths. Now, whenever I see a, a sequence of events like that, no longer enduring sound teaching, having itching ears, accumulating teachers that fit their own passions, turning away from truth, wandering off into myths. I pause and I ask, what, what order did these actually happen in? Which is the most basic? What's the, what's the root cause and what led to the next and the next and the next? And so here's the will not but. So I'm going to start here and just observe these five steps. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to try to put them in an order. You test me now to see if you think is, this is the order that they actually occur in. I'm going to suggest that their own passions should be mentioned first. Passions desires. When it says their own, it means their own private desires that are not shaped by sound teaching. And those passions give rise to a desire, an, an itch in the ear. I only want to hear things that scratch where I itch. And my itch is determined by me and my desires which leads to, now we could say it leads to accumulating teachers next, or we could say it leads from turning away from truth next. I'm going to suggest um, truth goes away from truth. In other words, when your passions and your desires become 
totally controlling and they begin to control what you want to hear, and you will only hear what suits your passions, then you have forsaken truth as the criterion of your life and have replaced your subjective passions, which then leads to gathering teachers who scratch where you itch. So I want to have people around me who confirm my departure from the truth and scratch my ears with the kinds of things that support my private autonomy and godlike passions, which of course then is what they do. And truth is replaced by myths. So, let's see if we can make sure that we see the connections. Having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers who suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. And all I did was try to order them in a way that can conceive of them happening in my own heart or mind, rather than just piling up all these pieces. So here, here is why preaching, preach the word, why preaching is so crucial, because without it, look what happens, passions take over in people's lives. They don't have preaching to transform their passions. That seems to me to be implied here, and it's just massively important for how we understand this heralding work of the preacher. Our work is in the power of the Holy Spirit, in season, out of season, with rebuke and and uh, reproof and exhortation and patience and teaching to seek to create new passions, new desires that itch for truth and gather true teachers and thus, and thus undo the power of myths. So the deep problem that preaching addresses is passions or desires that create itching ears, that turn from truth, that gather false teachers who replace truth with myth. And now we might have some sense of what sound means here. The time is coming when people will not endure sound. The word is healthy teaching. And I would say sound here is virtually the same as truth. Right? They turn away from listening to truth. They won't endure healthy teaching. Here's an interesting confirmation of that over in 1 Timothy 6, 3 to 5, down here in verse 5, he refers to people who are depraved in mind. And that word depraved would be the opposite of healthy and strong and whole. This is corrupt and degenerate and depraved mind because they are deprived of truth. Truth is designed by God to be suitable to the mind, to do away with depravity and overcome it and make the mind healthy and right at the heart of that healthy healthy mind or healthy doctrine is this i'm going to first timothy 1 the law is not laid down for the just but for whatever is contrary to sound healthy healthy doctrine and then he puts this at the center in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. So the gospel is right at the heart of the truth that creates healthy doctrine, which may be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit clear here so you can back this up if you want to look at it. Maybe that's why it ends, as for you, be sober. Endure suffering, do the work of a gospeler, fulfill your ministry, because this truth is the heart of this healthy 
teaching, and at the heart of that truth is the gospel. So inside and outside the church, the preached word always does the work of gospeling, evangelizing. And not just, that doesn't just mean uh, telling unbelievers how they can be saved. It means telling believers how precious the gospel truth is and keeping them sound in teaching so that their passions conform to the glorious gospel.